today I'm going to be showing you how to make this 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 and this I'm going to be showing you how to make every single style of hard techno kick in this video this is the complete guide everything you will ever pretty much need to know Definitely to get started and to just kind of like understand everything. To go with this video, I actually just dropped a new sample pack that could really help you with this style. Called Hardest Hard Rave Techno Kick and Bass Grooves Volume 1. Link is right at the top of the description on my website. For just $10, you get these 20 kick groups where you can see it's all the individual layers. The kick, the bass of all these very solid kicks. So I'll play these for you. Right, so just a bunch of really nice kick and bass loops, all individual layers, plus the full kicks, plus there's some bonus synth loops, and some original rave loops I created. So, a bunch of stuff in there that could really help you take your tracks to the next level. If you've been struggling, grab this pack, because the kick and bass really are a huge part of a track. Like, when you, if you were to look at it on, like, a chart, it would be, like, 60% of or 70% really at some point especially if it's a very open track of what you're hearing So having a really solid kick base is important and you can get this collection of 20 really solid kicks all ready to go That'll instantly take your tracks to the next level today So go grab that link is at the top of the description. It really helps support me But it's really about supporting you again This is something that could really help you if you just need new inspiration or if you're trying to learn and really break it down and be able to make your own kicks like this and just have some solid samples to work with. It's all right there. Thank you so much for the support, guys. And let's dive into the video. So, the first style we're going to talk about here is actually a pretty simple kick where we're going to have our main kick, right? So, this is just two kicks layered together. We have like a, a nice low end kick. And then a mid-range and high-end. You can see I've lined up the transients too. So that's... And then we're just taking that same thing. But we're playing 16th notes. There's a little bit of reverb. It's not like fully reverbed out like some rumble kicks. It's just a little bit to kind of give it some atmosphere. And then it's being side-chained to that kick. And then you can see there's a heavy low pass. I'm also cutting some of the low frequencies, so you really can't even hear it that much. But also, this can make your bass a bit more airy and kind of like, it helps the groove, I think. So also, or I found. So also, we're cutting that in the low end, or in the highs. And then we're just converting it to mono at the end. So this is a pretty simple kick and bass groove to make. And then we're also actually just compressing it a little bit. It is a little bit more punchy without this. Maybe we could use a little bit less, but it really helps it just like fill out. And this would be a really good kick, right? Like as long as you just have this main layer is just really punchy and solid, and you're starting with two good samples and kind of taking them and making them your own. You really can't go wrong. But if you want to go a little bit deeper, there's also this style of kick. So this is also two layers. We have our kick again. So this is one of the kicks I've already made actually a while ago. And then we have that same kick playing quarter notes, right? Just like it is up there. And then it's going through a delay. So you can hear it's getting that. And then we have this industrial bass percussion loop rack. So this is something I created. This is available on my website actually. And what it is is we have this split into the high end, the mids, and the lows. So you can see the lows have this bass amp on them. Making that a little bit fatter. The mids have another amp. 
and then the highs we have some overdrive but also this filter with an LFO so I talk about this technique a lot on here but this can add a lot of movement where basically you set this LFO to a saw wave down and eighth notes so it's going dun 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 and then if you put the distortion after so you get that like little bit of movement in the kick And by the time you put all the layers together, it just adds this nice, like, like when you hear a track, because a lot of times when you hear a track and you hear the intro and it's just the kick and the bass, there's actually a lot going on there, right? Like, it sounds like there's, like, some kind of crunchy mid-range distortion stuff. Well, this is how you can do that. This is how, like, you can really have, like, a lot going on with just your kick. And then we just have a small amount of reverb side chaining it another bass cut to make it a little bit more airy and then some highs cut out but we're letting more through you could also even wrench <laughs> like that and then we're converting it to mono and then on this one we have a little bit of compression you can see it's not nearly as much and actually i'm using a limiter so this is a technique a lot of people might think is not ideal but if you so if we turn it off, it's still solid, but this just kind of like glues it. And then the key here is just push it pretty much as hard as you can until it's like, you know, really squashed. Like any more and this would not work, but we've got it at just the right amount. Where it really pulls that kick together and we could even do less. It just depends on what you like or what you think sounds good. So then, the next style of kick here. So you can hear this kind of produces a more like powerful bass. Not that the other ones aren't powerful, but this is just like a different type. Like this is a lot more like, because it kind of has a note to it. So the way we're doing this is we're taking, so we have this kick, right? There's just two kicks layered together. And then we're actually taking the low end layer from that. And you can see I stretched it inside of the simpler here. And when you do that, you get like this long pulled out bass note. And then you can actually just pitch it to whatever you want. Sometimes I do it at the same pitch as the kick, but you don't always have to do that because sometimes it's too high. A lot of times you want to just like put it even lower, but this sounded good. Then we're just side chaining it, EQ, and then converting it to mono because even if you're not using reverb, sometimes these samples can have weird stereo stuff and for this bass, you really don't want to have that. So yeah you can see this creates a more solid bass like that's just constantly like the same thing which is good and you can even combine these too like you know you can put this together maybe with this well like just the mids and highs so there's a lot of ways to do these and then on the group of this one again just compression and then a bit of limiting to really glue this together. Then the last style I'm going to show you here. is similar. But there's a little bit more to it. So this is actually just a steady reverb rumble. We have this really solid fat kick. This is one that I've layered in the past. Which also, the other thing about this is like. You know, when you're making a track, it really helps to have these kicks like this that you've already made. Like, I don't think sound design and track making should always be the same thing. Now, obviously, like, you don't want to be too rigid about that because sometimes that can really be a lot of creativity. But ideally, like, if you're starting something like this to start a track, you don't want to also be, like, making the kick from the ground up. Like, do that in another session and then bring it in here like I've done. So we got that solid kick, no processing, and then we just have a rumble here. So this is that kick going through some reverb.
And then this amp, which obviously you can hear, really brings out the low end and converts it to mono. And then we go past it. And then just being side chain. And then the last step here is I'm actually boosting the bass, but we're cutting at 100 hertz, and that's gonna make more room for the kick, cause that's where the kick is most prominent. And then we have a little bit of drum bus, like 12%, right? So here's that, that. And then with it. It's the perfect, like, to where it's not too much, but it's also not, like, just flat. And then we have a bit of limiting again. And there it is. So, in 10 minutes, I have now shown you how to make all these different styles of kick. There's a lot of different things you can do. Again, you can combine these. You can do different little things. Hopefully, this inspires you and shows you some different ways to do things a little bit stronger. So, as always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what's in this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the hardest hard rave techno kick and bass grooves volume 1. The link is at the top of the description. Don't miss out. You get these 20 kits of bass and kick loops for all of these individual kicks. Again, I'll just play you a few of these. They're super solid. Again, this is something you can do right now to take your tracks to the next level. Today, don't miss out while it's available. Thank you so much for the support, guys. But again, it's also about supporting you, giving you the tools to make the best tracks of your life and get where you've been trying to get. So, if you're struggling or if you just want some new inspiration, click the link down there. Thank you so much for the support, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.